let's start with Nick joining the band last year. If you could walk me through the process, maybe from both sides. Mm. Uh, let's see. We played a tour. They asked me to join. I said, yeah, sure. I, I would see it. We played a show with different bands 2014. <laughs> In Tampere, we drank some beer. Yeah. Tasted. And that's how the beautiful story started. This is, yeah, that's the, that's the context. So it took some time to take off if this all began in 2014. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was two different bands and, um, I don't remember. Well, I remember some of that day, but we yeah. were, I think we were like sound checking Ingve riffs or something. And there was a snap decision made that's like, okay, it's party time because the sound check riffs are compatible. Yeah. That there's a sort of truth about the people. What kind of yeah. riffs they're using in the sound check? So that's how you spot the <laughs> bad people. <laughs> yeah. Ingve, Rat. Uh, what else? What else is good? Well, you have the sunglasses at night. <laughs> yeah, sunglasses at night. That's that's important. Yeah. But basically, that's that's the explosion in the beginning. Yeah. I think evolved, and then we kind of end up doing, or you end up ended up doing some tours in North America with uh. Insomnium and helping Will when Will was still not available for touring and then that's how our love love story started and now it's official now we're friends on facebook <laughs> yeah. what what is the word in facebook like you know relationship <laughs> which is difficult to <laughs> what it's complicated <laughs> <laughs> yeah Slasher EP comes out in uh, two days actually and a couple years after the original album so when and how were these four songs worked on? To be honest two songs of that EP was already from the old archives that we recorded all already in the origin sessions but we wanted to keep that album short because cool albums are not too long you know and then we decided to drop these two songs as a later used for digital singles and then at some point Nick joined the band and we thought it's too too long wait if we wait like release the full length album coming somewhere in the future somewhere in time and then then we did these two songs quite quickly slasher Nick was here when we arra arranged the song and and then we decided somehow I don't know how and when but we decided to cover the maniac and it was quite a quick decision and it turned out well and here we are soon is the release day so things happen and we don't know how and why but it, it it's really like the introductory for omnium gatherum us finnish omnium gatherum with mr cordell on board in the a side of the a side of an EP. Uh, A side. A league. <laughs> and the um, the the song slasher that it was kind of, I guess it was, you guys kind of had it. We tweaked out the arrangement a little bit uh, while I was over that one time, and then um, yeah, the tracking happened more or less independently on my end. I was here. Yeah, this room. <laughs> with that amp and <laughs> very international EP recorded yeah. in two different continents. Very modern way of doing things. Yeah. That was also something new yeah. working methods for OG and it worked. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully on the full length album, we will be in the same room here or there or anywhere. <laughs> but yeah. It still, it worked well to do this kind of like 
on the and both sides of the Atlantic. But of course, it's always nicer to be in the same same place. Yeah, it's, always, it's, it's good to know that we can do things this way if we have to for some reason. Yeah. It's good to yeah. have it. And good enough, we had had time enough so we could arrange it in the same room when the yeah. exit did, did it here. <laughs> So how did Maniac end up on the EP? It was kind of a quick decision, like <laughs> well, somehow on the original album, we got this 80s wipe, or it's always been there, but it was kind of unleashed even more. And then Maniac had been the party song. And at least I love the song. And I had in my head, like this sounds pretty much like Omnium Gadrum song between the lines, if you just do it with OG production and trademarks and stuff. And it kind of did. <laughs> I think it did the trick really well because the mixing guy, book producer Jens Bukren, he thought it's OG song. And when he mixed Slasher and Maniac, he sent me a message like, hey, dude, you are on the top of your game. Like these two songs are definitely the best <laughs> songs I've heard so far. So keep it up. And then three days later, Jens is sending me a message like, oh no, I just made a complete fool out of myself and I just noticed it's a flash dance song. <laughs> so I guess it turned out quite okay as a cover song. It didn't stand out to be something else than OG. I guess Jens Bokman was too young to know. Yeah. Too busy on watching some documentaries about mixing stuff and didn't <laughs> watch the fast <first> dance. <laughs> so you mentioned the next album. In what stage are you with the next one? Early tender stage. I was just trying to find some new riffs out of this guitar like five minutes ago, but I didn't find any. So it's coming. We're starting to work on some ideas, but it's really early to say any, anything else than, of course, the label and the management have already decided that album is coming out next year. So I guess we should start working to please our our guards and masters. <laughs> so what things do you think will be different this time with uh, Nick on board? As you said, you have now successfully already worked, you know, from two continents, but how do you think you're going to uh, work on this album is something gonna be like much different or how do you see it there's gonna be better guitar solos by nick <laughs> <laughs> other than my sloppy bullshit playing <laughs> i will never be the fanciest most technical pony on youtube or whatever but i can play angry and so <laughs> i'll try to bring that <laughs> angrier stuff yeah. for yeah. I guess we'll find out when we get there there's like piles of riffs and stuff lying around but it yeah. it's always every album I've ever worked on it it feels early until you get the first few things in place and then it flows yeah that's that's some black magic. You never know how it ends up. We kind of yeah. have some riffs, and yeah, you guys having like the main concept for the album themes and lyrics, and we kind of have some concept for the music. But then, then when you really start to work, in usually some concepts are buried, and it, it will never end up being something you were aiming to do. And yeah, I hate that process in a way. <laughs> like you're starting to do the album, you have the empty paper and it's really frustrating. And then when it's ready, it's it's cool moments, but it's always a long journey. The blank you know, page is the worst thing in the world. Yeah. Creative process. At some point you feel like you're a genius and next moment you think you're the most worst musician in the world and everything in between and everything might happen in same minute now that you joined the band and the next og album is coming out next year so like what are your thoughts i'm ready for battle let's go let's fucking go <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, no, I feel great. I'm uh the the writing and the and the arranging and the working on new music, that's sort of the that's my favorite part of all this. The touring is a close second. But yeah, I'm a I'm a song nerd. It's kind of a funny thing. I don't know. I've done all this like lead guitar stuff, but the thing is I never cared about guitar playing outside of a song. It has to be in a song that I like. And so that's what I think about more than, okay, what lick, what scale, what, what technique. So I'm just ready to get into it. Yeah. That's also my go with guitar playing. I've always loved like, songs with good guitar players like what we've jammed like old europe with john norum and stuff like that and it's always better than some good old shrapnel records instrumental albums it's not nobody wants to listen like instrumental albums as a whole it's cool every now and then but like full album of shredding it's it's kind of boring when it's done in a good song then it's it's great but yeah we we also have like done few really good tours now together so i also agree that we are ready for battle now we have to unleash the fury (laughs) in in way terms except unleash the fury wasn't that good album well you are at the moment in different continents but how does the rest of this year look for you festivals next i guess nick is flying in a week is to europe doing some gigs and then there's of course some some gigs which is doesn't make sense for nick to come here if we are playing like one of so in finland then depending on a show but but then in the later on we are touring europe with paradise lost and primordial and harakiri for the sky that's cool festival tour ultima race in europe and that's basically what's in the pipeline for this year and we should really start to concentrate on the album as people are teasing us and waiting the album which is frustrating because we artists needs always all the time in the world and then nothing happens and the next artist needs a deadline and then something might happen yeah, what's the best live song from the new EP? We we've just uh, played Flasher and Maniac, so <laughs> both of them. Yeah. Those are both a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. People people seem to love them and the Maniac is kind of like a funny live song because we played it even before it was like released and then it's such a famous song, but then people start to like in few seconds they get to know like oh fuck I know this song and then they get mad. So I think it's gonna be a nice summer hit in the festivals that we are doing. <laughs> yes, they get mad and they want to fight us. <laughs> it's perfect. <laughs> and Slasher is a really mean live song. It we played it on the like previous US tour and it really got like a more spits going on and I love the fast heavy songs all the time so for me slasher it's- 